The following program is presented by the Metropolitan Library Service Agency. Hello, welcome to All About Kids, a program focusing on the interests of children and young people and some of the issues affecting them. From August to October of 1993, thousands of Minnesotans toured the Anne Frank and the World exhibition held in St. Paul. This exhibition focused on the life of Anne Frank, a young Jewish girl killed in the Holocaust, as a starting point for individuals to examine how they can make a difference in fighting discrimination in today's society. Our guests today are students from the Maple Grove Junior High School. Rachel Jacobson, Brith Peterson, Jake Kuhn, and Karen Dolly will be talking with their teacher, Janet Johnson, about their impressions of this exhibition. The students at Maple Grove Junior this year, in September 1993, had a chance to attend the Anne Frank exhibit. And now our school-wide enrichment model is, has adopted the theme, I Can Make a Difference. And Karen, what were your impressions of the Anne Frank exhibit? Well, I thought it was really interesting and I thought it went into a lot of depth with Anne's life and didn't just show little parts of it. I thought it showed a lot about it. And it seemed to really get a lot, or like the kids really had a really big effect on them. And some kids would go on acting really silly and. Some, and mm -hmm. then the kids, the same kids would come out, <coughs> mm -hmm. you know, with a totally different perspective of it. So that and was... And understood it. Yes. And what do you mean by understanding it? Um, they understood how Anne went into hiding and her family went into hiding and how they were a victim mm -hmm. of it. So s some of our students went in with uh, kind of a silly attitude but came mm -hmm. out with more of an understanding. Mm -hmm. And our group didn't have a whole lot to see because we were really rushed in and rushed out. And was it mm -hmm. their group yeah, there? our group was rushed too, I mean, but I thought it was a real good exhibit. Yeah, I thought it was too. Mm -hmm. It was really yeah. good. It really showed a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. The one thing I remember is um, Anne Frank's room, and you walked in and there was like this bookcase like yes. to show the covering of the entrance, mm -hmm. and then you like opened it and you walked in and you saw like her desk to the left of you, and mm -hmm. it had like her diary that she wrote. And then to the right was her bed, and there was the blackened, the darkened window, so you couldn't see in. And then what I found interesting was like um, across the wall there was all like these pictures of her famous people that she liked. Yes. And the one mm -hmm. the, that I remember is Shirley mm -hmm. Temple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was the room was so small. You really didn't think that it was that small in the book when you read it. Mm -hmm. But then when you actually got in there, you're thinking how tiny it is really. And it was mm -hmm. also really hard to imagine that two people were also <coughs> in that room at yeah. the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Did the tour guide have you uh, be real quiet in that room? Did she talk to you at all about that? She said we mm -hmm. couldn't touch anything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then she had us like be silent just to think how it was for her mm -hmm. because they had mm -hmm. to be quiet up there. Because yeah. mm -hmm. they had to be quiet all uh, day. Couldn't make a sound. Mm -hmm. So, In the diary of Diary of the Anne Frank book, it mm -hmm. really explained a lot of her room, yeah. so it re you really yeah. got the full yeah. picture of it. So you knew what it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rachel, do you have some thoughts? Well, I really remember her picture. I mean, mm -hmm. she was like a regular teenager just like us, and she, I don't think she had any right to die for what she believed in or how her mm -hmm. appearance was. Um, she, I think it could have been any of us. Um, she just hap happened to be the unlucky one. Yes just the way, she, what she believed in and the time period mm -hmm. that she lived in. When, when you walked into the exhibit and saw that, the picture of Anne Frank, did she look any differently than anyone else? Or? No, mm -hmm. she didn't, I guess. I don't think he, uh, Hitler had the right to kill people for what he thought was right. Mm -hmm. I, was, I, was, I agree with you, Rachel. I was like shocked because they were so young, her and her sister, and, you know, they hadn't even really experienced a lot of life, and then they were 
just killed. Yeah. It wasn't really right for her to be locked in. All yeah. teenagers want to go out and have fun with their friends, and she mm -hmm. didn't have the right. She couldn't do that. And mm -hmm. she died mm -hmm. right before her 16th birthday, so that was really that was mm -hmm. hard. Yeah. When with the group, I went in with to the exhibit, the tour guide. But the, the first question she asked was, "Does she look in the picture? Does right. she look any different <coughs> mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. any of us?" And she doesn't. I mean, just as an ordinary kid. Mm -hmm. Any other experiences uh, about going to the exhibit? Anything else you can think of? Um, I think the diary was how they showed stuff, parts of the diary. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really well kept and mm -hmm. preserved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the actual, how they showed that, some of the writing. and They made that model of where they stayed, and like, mm -hmm. and, like the bookcase and everything. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really amazing. You got a better picture yeah. of what it was really like. What it, mm -hmm. the building was like. It really showed yeah. a lot. It did. Mm -hmm. Any pictures that you can remember? Pictures on the wall? Or well, I remember seeing like lots of people like in the concentration camps yeah. mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. stuff, and then like you know going into the gas chambers. Bryce, what did you know about that before you went to the exhibit? Well, we read the book um, Anne Frank, and we also read another. I read um, another book about the Holocaust. Or Do you remember other. what it was? What was it? Um, she read in the eighth grade. That star one, the number of the stars. Yeah, number of the stars. Mm -hmm. That was a really good book. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, they would say that the gas chambers were showers, you know, so they could clean up. Mm -hmm. And when they went in there, they would like actually just gas them. Okay. And then they had like mm -hmm. they showed the rooms, you know, and stuff. Mm -hmm. and there was like blue stuff on the ceiling from the gas and all that. Could any of you relate to Anne? Uh, in what way would you relate to Anne? Was it just age, or I noticed you said you noticed the pictures on her wall. How, how was she any different than uh, teenagers today? Or I don't when you were know. reading the diary, what? I don't think she was. No, I, I don't think, think she was either. I mean, I think she was a normal kid. Yeah, mm -hmm. she, I mean, she had mm -hmm. dreams. You know, she wanted to be like an artist or yeah, a writer, and yeah. you know, singer she, and dancer, just yeah. like mm -hmm. her kids. You know, and she had like movie stars that she really lo looked up to and admired. And, Admired, I should mm -hmm. say. In. Just like we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She wanted to go out and have fun with mm her -hmm. friends and mm -hmm. normal stuff that kids would do. Right. Okay. So let's let's talk about uh, if she was just a normal teenager and you related to her. What uh, what did you bring back? What did you learn, Karen? Talk about that a little bit. What did you learn from going to the exhibit? What is, how is it going to make a difference in your life? Well, I'm not going to discriminate against anyone because that's really how it started. You know, mm -hmm. people being racist and sexist, and I'm going to try to stop people that are trying to do that because when you s start stopping people, it's stopping them and from other people doing it too to other people. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot about that. What about speaking up? Um, it just comes to my mind that. Uh, one thing that we've studied is not speaking up. You really don't do anything. Mm -hmm. How can you become more active, or what would you do? Well, I think a lot of kids are scared to speak up because mm -hmm. they don't want to draw the attention to themselves. Right. When they yeah. do that. So. Yeah, I agree with you, and they don't want everyone to make start making fun of them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because then they get hurt just like the other person. Mm -hmm. But I think if you know if you start to speak up against unfair. You know, and right. adjust stuff, you know, you could probably make a difference, I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and help, you know, stop some of the unjust things that are going on. Right. When I met Henry Florenti as the um, director of the Anne Frank exhibit, um, that's what he talked about is just speaking up, saying something. And uh, we um, had to examine in our lives the difference between not saying anything and really discriminating ourselves and mm -hmm. becoming a active. So it was interesting to me to examine my life and my actions. I don't think the Holocaust would have really ever begun if people would have started speaking up in the first place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right yeah away. I agree with Karen. I mean, if, uh, if the people also hadn't voted Hitler maybe into power, I mean, mm -hmm. maybe, the, you know, maybe this mm -hmm. wouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. And it it also cost a lot of you know a lot of uh, ally or a lot of other people's lives mm -hmm. to save these other people, and it also helped. Uh, it also 
um, made people more aware of what actually happened over there to all these people that were supposedly getting put off to these, taken away to these camps. Yes. Mm -hmm. And made you more, like, open up your eyes and see what happened. Mm -hmm. And eventually the people that didn't speak up got killed. So right. maybe if yeah. they would have, you know. Yeah. <coughs> mm -hmm. What about you, Bryce? What, when you came back, wh how do you see the transfer of what you learned? Well, to the main life? thing that I noticed, like, through the whole exhibit was that today people are still discriminating towards other races and mm -hmm. religions. And um, a way we could, like, stop it or something, it, or a way I could, is by, like, setting a good example in hope that other people would stop discriminating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like just be nice and not acting in like a discriminatory manner or something. Mm -hmm. And a good example like for our age group would be so like that, so we don't tell like any ethnic jokes or you know jokes that hurt yeah, anybody right. mm -hmm. hear a lot of those. in a way, you know. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that, I think that's really an important point. When Maple Grove Junior High opened, our principal stood before the faculty and said that any ethnic jokes, racist jokes, anything, that if we even laughed at them, uh, that would just not be tolerated. Mm -hmm. So even uh, adults struggle with this too, is because it seems to be accepted to laugh or to uh, make fun of a certain race when mm -hmm. in fact it does hurt someone. I think mm -hmm. we, it really has to stop with kids because once mm -hmm. they grow up, if they you right. know believe in being racist, they'll teach their kids that, and it will keep going on and yeah. on. Mm -hmm. and so we have, we have to be the ones to stop it. So, do you think that uh, discrimination or hatred is a learned behavior? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also think that um, I think it's changed. I think we're more aware now of racist. I mean, uh, racism, sexism, mm -hmm. and discrimination, because you can't. I mean, th we, we have so much political stuff around that you can't, you know, make fun of people. And right. Y you know. And that's what the exhibit shows. Yeah. You know, the mm -hmm. four themes. Mm -hmm. Cause, I mean, mm -hmm. if you get if you carry it too far, then that might, you know, it could happen. But, but like right. Karen said, you know, it, it carries on to your kids and then their kids and then mm -hmm. keeps on going on and on. Mm -hmm. So. Do you think uh, discrimination leads to violence? Do you have any thoughts on that? Or? I think it does. Mm -hmm. It could, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there are also a lot of movies out there today. That mm -hmm. show? Yeah, yeah. have yeah. a lot of violence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think we're also just so, you know, we're so used to violence in the news almost every night. There's a lot of mm -hmm. killings and, you know, a lot of people mm -hmm. that get hurt. And it's sad to say, but I think you're almost just, you know, used to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's that's yeah, it's really it's sad. Like a yeah, thing you really for have to, to say. No. Right. You really have to retrain yourself. Yeah. To to be the one to speak up and to uh, end the violence, the discrimination, discrimination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Jake. Uh, how does how does would you say that this experience will change you from going to the Anne Frank exhibit? You've already talked about some things. What else could we? Well, I, I, I it makes me more aware now mm -hmm. of discrimination. I don't think if I, if maybe if I didn't notice it before, now I probably will notice it more and try to stop it. Mm -hmm. And like Karen says, it also hurts more the. It hurts the immediate target, but it also hurts a lot of other people around them. Because mm -hmm. if you don't start speaking up, then they might pick on. It might on happen to you. Yeah, if you don't say you. anything. Right. Okay. Now our theme for Maple Grove Junior is going to be: is I can make a difference. Can you talk about how you can make a difference right in our school? Just specific things that you could possibly do to make a difference. Um, speak out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you when you see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you see something unjust or, you know, someone discriminating someone else, you might want to just mm -hmm. say, how would you, how would you like someone else to call you that, you know. Or make a joke about mm -hmm. yeah. you and like that. Make fun of you. Mm -hmm. And they have um, mediation in our school and it stops people from fighting. If you're in a fight with a friend or anyone else in the school, mm -hmm. you can ha have mediation to help resolve the Tell me conflict. more about mediation. 
how, how does it Describe how it works. Well, you and someone you are in <coughs> contact with, mm -hmm. you will get together, you'll decide if you want to have mediation, and if you, one person doesn't want to have mediation, um, you don't have to go into mediation. But when you, when you decide, if both of you decide that you are going to, um, you have two mediators, and they will ask you questions, and they won't take sides, and you'll, the two people who are in the conflict they'll have to try and find a way to solve their problem. Isn't one of the mediator um, a kid your own age? Yeah, yeah, and it can be teachers. It can be a teacher and a student or two students. And none of yeah. the stuff that you talk about goes like out of the room or yeah. anything, so mm -hmm. you don't yeah. have to worry about It seems about like that. students mm -hmm. um, can resolve conflicts with a student at their age more than an adult. That seems like that. Yeah. That mm -hmm. It helps more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we're really uh, learning tolerance that's such a part of, of growing is just learning tolerance and um, it seems that conflict mediation is just a way to tolerate another person's viewpoint. Um, this spring we're going to have a chance at Maple Grove Junior to really have every student involved and I can make a difference. We're going to go out to feed the homeless, we're going to clean yards and Osseo, we're going to daycare centers, and we're going to put the theme into action. If you were to choose something that you could do to make a difference, to really get out and physically do labor or whatever, what could you see yourself involved in? Rachel, do you have any idea? We're going to have a day, I believe it's January or February, that we're going to go out as a school. Um, I'd probably help feed the homeless, probably. Okay. Yeah. Have yeah. you ever done that, right? Reason. Well, last year, you know how we have like that food drive? Yes. And I'd probably go do that. I've gone okay. to Loaves and Fishes and helped with that. Yes, that's yeah. one of the places we'll go. Mm -hmm. um, maybe uh, just like shoveling out driveways or maybe not to the extent, but like everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, but That's like, right. Yeah, well, well, like everyone else said, uh, like helping the homeless, feeding them, mm -hmm. cleaning up like yards maybe and stuff like that. Right. I think. Well, and know. also I like go to a nursing home and like help with older people, mm -hmm. so. But you really have to keep it in your mind, to take the knowledge and put it, put it into action so that we really are, are making a difference. We have to keep that on the utmost uh, top of our mind because the, the exhibit can impress us for a day or a week or a month, but to keep it alive in our hearts and really make a difference, like Anne Frank's uh, spirit is really important. And can you think of ways, like Bryce, you said to, to keep that spirit in mind to, to go out and do things. How will you keep that spirit alive? I really think you should tell the kids um, Anne's life story because someday they will be controlling the world and they'll know how much she suffered and I think they should really know mm -hmm. what went on with Anne. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I also think that if we hadn't found her diary, you know, we probably wouldn't have, we wouldn't be here probably right now doing this. Mm -hmm. Probably wouldn't have thought video about and, it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and no one probably would have known about this girl and her mm -hmm. family. So mm -hmm. I think what Rachel said was very important. I think we should go around and tell our kids that, you know, discrimination is wrong. Discrimination mm -hmm. is wrong. And encourage mm -hmm. that with everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we have the support of the mayor of Maple Grove and we have the administration's support. And I hope this year's SEM theme really does put us all into action because we need to be active in our society to end discrimination and all its effects, including violence. Mm -hmm. um, can I ask you a que question, uh, Karen? Um, do you think the Holocaust could reoccur? Um, yeah, I think it could because I believe that wherever hatred is, it can grow. Yeah. yeah. I think it can. You have to find ways to stop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. Just, just with all the hatred all yeah. over, you would have to stop that. And I don't but think, I think in the United States, you know, we don't really, there's probably some small country, you know, in some part of the world that no one really cares about or knows, and that, that might be happening right now. 
Right. And there mm -hmm. could be a small war going on, kind of like Bosnia and mm -hmm. all that. And so. And there is there is some groups in the United States that is like that too. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all over. Yeah, and you can't have a TV crew at every corner of the world to. That's right. Yeah. See what's mm -hmm. happening. Yeah. That's right. So. And you guys think, think it could reoccur too? Yeah. I do. I do. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to stop it now. Mm -hmm. right. So it can't. Um, do you feel that you need to be more politically active? And the reason that I asked that is I was a tour guide for the exhibit and one of the things was how Hitler got uh, put into power and how it's so necessary for us to be active voters and, a and know who our leaders are mm -hmm. and what youth groups are you associated with? Where are you signing your name? With whom are you associating? And it really put a different perspective on things, even for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to be associated with a youth group that, uh, like Hitler's youth, yeah. even mm -hmm. though those people felt that they were being very loyal, very good citizens. I, and he also like. He told him lies too, I think. Just so, because mm -hmm. he knew yeah. what they wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. So yeah. he would like brainwash them so, so he knew that they wanted to hear that. So mm -hmm. they would tell him. Mm -hmm. He would tell him that. Mm -hmm. and, and it was like, or, it was ordinary people, citizens like you and me and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everyone right. else. I think you need to know a lot about who you're going to vote for. Exactly. Because he just showed up and said uh -huh. what they wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. And the ordinary people you know they do the persecuting and some of them are the persecuted right and they suffer and so mm -hmm. I want to thank each one of you today for being willing to talk and at the end of the Anne Frank exhibit each one of you wrote a diversity pledge would you just go over that or your thoughts on it well when I see discrimination going on I'm going to speak out and not just let it go by. I'm going to stop it with me, so that's mine, what I'm planning to do. Mine was um, to not be discriminatory, and if I see any, stop it. And when I was looking at the tree when I was reading it, I saw, like, different, you know, types of people, you know, because they had their little signs, you know, and stuff, and it was really interesting to read other people's pledges that they made, too. Okay. I said, uh, I'll try not to discriminate, um, because... It, I'll try not to discriminate, um, and I'll try to speak out against uh, discrimination. And uh, I said, try, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I said I will not discriminate, and I want to speak out and teach the younger kids about this, so it won't happen again. Yeah. Our theme is um, we can make a difference. I can make a difference. Are you going to? Yes. I'll try. Yes, yeah. We'll try. We'll try. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll try. These articulate students have obviously given a lot of thought to this topic. Thank you, Rachel Jacobson, Britt Peterson, Jake Kuhn, and Karen Dolly. Thank you, Janet Johnson. And thanks to all of you for joining us on All About Kids. Please tune in again. This has been a presentation of Hennepin County Library in conjunction with the Twin Cities Metropolitan Library Service Agency. We thank you for watching and we hope you visit your public library often.